Hey guys, welcome to the Wat Umong Temple in Chiang Mai, Thailand and today I want to show you how I shoot travel b-roll at places like that and I mostly want to talk about why I get certain shots so that I end up having a good sequence here even if I didn't plan anything before. So let's do it! So I want to start the sequence here with a few introductionary shots that show that we're on a Buddhist place here, but I don't directly want to reveal the main attraction, which will be a bigger temple that's like farther up there. And the reason for that is simply that if I would introduce a temple directly, the viewer basically has seen the main attraction directly and can basically stop watching the video. So instead, I want to deliver the feeling of the place a bit. I want to show how you go to the main temple and then I want to reveal it and after that I will also show what you can do after visiting the temple. So first shot here that I want to get is of the statue up there. I will do a like revealing shot of the statue by zooming in here like to 55 millimeters or around 80 millimeters on a full frame camera. And so to do so, I just kneel down here. I focus on the statue. Always use manual focus with single autofocus together and then I can make a simple slide move. And this shot I filmed that in 60 frames per second because there's nothing moving in the shot so I can always slow it down, it makes it a bit smoother, I have a longer shot etc. So 60 fps is better and when I work on a 24p timeline later in the edit. But regarding 60p, it's definitely better not to always shoot in 60p, just on shots where nothing is moving. Because if you have a character or so walking in the shot and always having slow motion is also not that good. It like becomes old pretty quick in your video. And as a second shot, I will also get one wide angle shot here of the stairs. I'm not exactly sure if I will put the first shot first later or if I will use that shot as a first shot and then show the statue it depends a bit i will see about that in the edit but here it's now important to get a bunch of shots here to show the entrance of the temple so i'm starting now at the bottom of the stairs here i try to make sure that the stairs is framed good so the stairs is directly in the middle of the frame And now I also want to get a few even closer shots here of the statues so that I have a bit more footage to play with in post. So maybe I could also insert that after the two first shots that we got here. Or I will only use maybe the stairs shot and then get some close-up shots of the statues here. There you see how easy that goes because I was able to shoot in 60 frames. So it takes two seconds and I got the shot. Maybe we can do a bit more like here also there's some some uh, Thai written text so maybe I can also use that in my video. I start the shot here at the bottom edge not necessarily for a transition but just to make it a bit more interesting that the font reveals. Yeah I want to make a like kind of forward sliding shot so that parts of the text come in focus. Okay, and I will also get a shot of this statue now because when I show this shot here with the wall to the left, then it would be a bit weird if I show this statue because then the viewer sees that it doesn't really match from wherever the wall is placed. Like here it would be on the left side and there on the right side then. So here it makes sense to also get a shot of this statue so that I can choose later in post which statue I insert. And here's pretty good for a revealing shot. We have the plants in the foreground, the bush there, and we also have the statue in the background. So here I can also simply zoom in a bit. We actually get that without a flip screen like to shoot with the EVF. Focus on the statue, expose right. I usually get two or three clips of the same shot because sometimes you just mess one shot up and you want to have another one then in post. Now I'm looking for the next shot here. Actually have the entrance to the tunnel soon, which is really nice. Definitely want to show that. It's actually a nice one. You see the monk there cleaning the floor here and you see the 
tunnels in the background. Not sure if I can get the tunnel in the background directly to reveal that, but I can at least show him maybe together with the statue. So that's nothing complicated really here. I just keep the camera rolling, a static shot. Sometimes it's okay to have a static shot. You don't always have to have camera movement. It's totally fine to just hold it steady for a while. Maybe get something interesting like a monk in the statue. And here I want to get a wide angle shot low to the ground because there's a statue, we have the stair in the front. So that looks pretty epic here, but it is actually quite hard to do shots like that out of your hand just with a normal camera. So now I want to use a top handle for that. So your top handle is just $25 or something like that. Just mount it on top of your camera. And that makes getting such low angle shots so much easier. Not just low angle shots, generally shots as well. So let's do that. Okay. Yeah, that's so much easier. I love top handles. I'm not a gimbal user because gimbals add so much weight to the bag and I would have to set everything up. But with a top handle, you just put it on the camera and just because of the gravity, it stabilizes the camera a little bit. Now we're getting close to the tunnels here, which are pretty unique at this temple. I really love them. And I want to reveal them, so I'm looking for a foreground object here. I could maybe use, I'm not the statue really, but maybe this tree here. Could also use the plants low to the ground. They are super small, but they are absolutely usable for that. Actually, in my practical videography course, I give you drills that let you develop a better eye for what foreground objects you can use and lots of other stuff. So just check this course out, it really helps. It's not just me talking in front of the camera, but I really give you actual drills that help you become a better videographer. So that makes it pretty unique. I will take the lower bush here and maybe one more with the tree. I focus on the tunnel. But I keep the bush in the foreground. Could be nice here. Here's this hole in the tree. Oh yeah, this actually looks pretty cool. Not sure if I will use this shot later, but it looks pretty cool. And before we get into the tunnel, I also want to get some shots here of the Heads that are placed here everywhere. So maybe I can also put that in between a sequence somewhere where it fits or where I have a gap where I need to fit something to the music. So it's always good to have some hole fillers. And here I also use that stone here as a foreground object to make my camera movement visible. Now the tunnels here would be great for a hyperlapse because it's like really tight and like walking through it looks pretty cool but I don't do that now because that would require me to shoot single photos so it would probably take like 15 minutes or so to just get one shot and there I lose too much time. So instead I would just get some normal shots out of the tunnel. What I could do now is to simply get a shot of myself walking into the tunnel because we had this first revealing shot of the tunnel and now as a transition to going inside, it's good to show a shot like that. So I grab my gorilla pod and then I figure out that I don't have a quick release plate under my camera, which sucks. But even if you forget your quick release plate, what you should never do, you can always just grab a stick and put the camera low to the ground like that, which actually looks pretty nice here because this low to the ground shot makes me bigger, so it looks a bit more epic. Maybe I can also use a gorilla pot here actually to get this shot. Okay, that looks good. And now I simply step over my camera. Now here in the tunnel I want to get a close-up shot of the statue, but I also saw that the roof is open, which looks quite nice. Just have to ramp up my ISO a bit. I will just get multiple shots here, like for a single roof, single statue and also one together. Then I see in post what looks good and what I can use in the final video. I like that to be really tight to walls when I move the camera, that always gives a really nice effect. You see the sliding against the wall, that's a pretty interesting shot. You can also get a good shot of the roof from here because here we have 
this edge so that kind of reveals it. I first focus here on the part where I want to focus on and then I go back. Like I always use manual focus combined with single autofocus. I also try to capture different angles here, like once where I see more the broken roof and once where I go more to the other part of the tunnel so that I also have more clips to play with in post. Also want to kneel down for the shot of the statue to make it look a bit more interesting, to make the statue appear bigger. Okay. Here it's very nice for a revealing shot actually because I can start the camera here on top and then I can slide it down and reveal like the tunnel here, which is quite nice. I don't have a shot now where I did that before, so I can't really do a transition now. So later when I'm outside again, I will look for a shot where I also move the camera down behind a wall so that I can use that shot as a transition for that shot here. So I'm usually not planning my transitions, but when I know a shot where I really want to have a transition, I just try to get one shot that I can put before or after. So let's get that one here. I also set my focus to the very end of the tunnel now and then Put the camera up. Okay. Now I'll also move the camera down like that to the ground. Eventually I can make another transition there. Uh, it's so fucking sweaty here. It's, it's humid like hell. It's not actually that warm. I think, what do we have? 28, 30 yeah, degrees? Yeah. But, but it's, it's like super humid. So here of that, I will get a very simple shot by just holding the camera in front of me and move forward. You don't need a gimbal. A tip that I can give you here for situations like that where you have to have handheld shots where you have to walk so much. At first, of course, turn your IBIS and digital image stabilization on, but also activate the level display on your monitor because that shows you always if you level and then automatically you walk a bit more stable as you would usually do. But now let's go to the temple. I see it already. Okay, now we're outside here and it's actually perfect light right now. It's still a bit soft from the clouds, but it shines really nicely on the temple behind me. But I don't want to reveal the complete temple directly now. I still want to introduce the temple at first. So also get a shot from here where I have the edge from the wall in the foreground and also the leaves here so that I kind of show a little bit of the temple, but I don't show it completely. Okay, so usually when I want to get a shot like that where I don't show something completely directly but just a part of it, I would zoom in more to make it easier for me. But here just because of the framing, I don't have to do it. Now I have a bit of a problem here because I want to get a wide angle shot of, from here of the temple because the sun hits it so nice. But it's a very similar framing to what I had in the shot before. And that's why I would say I will get the shot now here just because it looks so good. But I will also get a few other more like close up shots or where parts of the temple are hidden so that eventually I will not put the shot that I got before in the final video. But instead I will use another shot then to like not show the temple completely directly. Here's for example a good shot now to zoom in a little bit, keep the leaves in the foreground and just get a part of the temple. So that is also a shot that I could use then to put in front of the shot where I show the wall temple. Very easy one. Here it's really nice, there's something like a hole in the leaves and that shows the top part of the temple. So I can perfectly shoot through the leaves here now to only really show a very small part of the temple but still have an interesting shot. Okay, there we got one. I think this shot is even better than the shot that we got at first of the temple. Now I also want to go to the other side of the temple because then the sun is behind it and it's always nice to get shots where the sun hits the edge of something. 
it's actually not that much that I can do. I wish I would have my Canon 10 to 18 mm lens with me now, but I don't have it. So I have to stick to 18 mm here. Sucks a little bit because with a more wider angle lens, I would get better shots here right now. So always bring a wide angle and at least a standard zoom or something like that. Maybe also a telephoto zoom lens. Really depends a bit on what you want to do, but generally having a super wide angle and a standard zoom lens helps a lot. It's actually really nice. Now you can see that the form of the trees match perfectly to the form of the temple. I did not plan that before, but it's always when I go out, there are some shots that I did not plan before, but they turn out so good. So just go out more and get shots. It's always worth it. Now I want to get one close-up shot more here where I kind of reveal the sun. Like I start behind the edge here, then I move to the right so that I get a sun flare directly in the lens. That is a shot that you can always do. It looks always nice. Now I'm at the other side of the temple and here the sun also hits the temple really nice. Just not from the left side, but from the right side. So I also want to get a shot of here. And when you look here, here are those bushes. So it's really nice here to use the bushes as a foreground object while I'm moving the camera forward. So that also reveals the temple here in a big size. So you see again, I have multiple wide angle shots of the temple here that I can later use in my edit to come up with a final sequence. So again, it's pretty good with the top handle if you want to shoot a bit up is to pull the lens down and at the same time pull the top handle up. And as usual, I got a wide angle or a long shot now of that gong here, but now when I walk closer to it, I thought the sun catches nicely here as well. And it's always good to get some close-up shots after getting a wide angle shot or so, so that you can combine them. So that's what I will do now. So not every shot that you get must be for storytelling. Sometimes it's also good to have a few shots that you can just put somewhere in between. Just show something beautiful in between sometimes. It's totally fine as long as there is still a sequence or something that somehow tells a story or makes sense in the way how it's put together. So now I have enough introductionary shots of the temple and some shots of the temple itself. So all the main part is covered. But the end of our trip is also interesting. So what are you doing after the main attraction? And here it is actually that they have a very nice lake here with a small island in the middle of the lake. So I also want to get a few shots of that and maybe two or three shots of myself sitting there somewhere so that it's a bit like coming to an end in the sequence of that travel video. So I would say let's just get there and maybe get two or three shots on the way to somehow transition from the temple to that place. Here on the temple now is the problem that I can't fly my drone. So otherwise I would simply get some drone shots there because then after getting the shots of the temple, I can then insert some drone shots to transition to the other places. So like, like other drone shots or time lapses are usually pretty good for that. But here we're a bit more limited now. So I will have to look for some other shots. Maybe I will just get a shot of myself walking around here or so. And here's actually a nice one for filming myself going on the bridge to the lake. That's here you have these two trees and it's perfect to put these two trees in the foreground so that I walk in between there. So also when you get shots of yourself and you have to put your camera somewhere, think about foreground objects. In that case, they are not there to create camera motion or so. They're just there to make the shot a bit more interesting. Here again, I don't have my gorilla pot, so I will just use what I have. Now here I showed me going to the bridge. So now I can reveal what I see while walking through the bridge. Here are some birds, they're always here, it's pretty nice. I like how the sun falls over the lake. So now I want to put that behind the birds to like make the scene look a bit better. And that's why also I will not zoom too close to the birds. So now I want to get a shot through there. Again, foreground objects. I just want to sit down off my, on the bank. So I want to get a shot of myself. I think something like that is a good ending scene because then it feels a bit like you achieved what you were looking for. Like we've seen the temple. I spent some nice time here at the lake and then I'm sitting down and I'm just enjoying the last few minutes. So I think a shot like that is always good to put at the end of a sequence.
So that's how I shoot travel videos without a plan, like when I go to a place and I really have no idea on what shots I want to get. Generally I try to somehow make it interesting by mixing it a bit up with some close-up shots and shots of the surrounding area in general and then some wide-angle shots and revealing shots of the main subject or the main attraction like here the temple was and then I try to somehow find an end to it of course if let's say your travel video is only about one certain place then the end could be how you end up at the restaurant or you drive back maybe something happens at your hotel or something like that of course then that's like even better storytelling but let's say you have a travel video where you are at multiple places like usually like some colliders for example then it's always good to have sequences like that and now I probably shot maybe 40 50 clips probably even more so I have a lot of footage there that I can use for my final travel video to put everything together and I don't have to use every single clip if let's say I have 10 places where I go within one travel video then I can only use five or ten clips from that one temple here and then use other footage but the important thing here is really that I have some clips that I can use as a sequence that I have some clips that show the surrounding area then something of the main subject some close-ups that don't show too much some wide angle shots that show all and then maybe some ending shots of what I do after seeing the main attraction so that's how I do it we'll probably shoot some more shots here like of me drinking coffee or so on to make the ending even better but I think that's so easy easy to know how to do it it's basically just holding the camera in front of your face and drinking coffee that we don't really have to show that here so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if yes then leave me a thumbs up and also don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button for upcoming videos like that hope to see you in the next one